name is Mary Hubbard, and here I'm here with the Art and News Exhibition for the Jordan Schnitzer Museum of Art. Here with me to conduct this interview are my colleagues Rachel Ober and Deb Sanyal. Hello, I'm Deb Sanyal, and today we are joined here by Sarah Glidden, comics journalist, to, dis uh, to discuss some of her works. Thank you so much for being here, Sarah. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. All right, um, jumping in and, to, and to, to kind of get us started with the interview and sort of broadly speaking, um, this, this entire exhibition is about communalism. Um, so just thinking about the term, um, what um, uh, attracted you to comics journalism and how would you, how would you characterize your work in terms of that term? In, in relation to that term? You know, I don't even know if when I started out doing comics, that was even um, in my mind. Uh, when I started out, I was kind of doing more journal comics, um, kind of at that time, this was like 2006, there weren't a lot of comics out there to find, especially not comics journalism. There was definitely Joe Sacco, um, you know, who's in the exhibition and, um, I, you know, his stuff was out there and it was definitely one of the first books I read was Palestine and it made a huge impression on me. But besides his work, there wasn't a lot of nonfiction comics out there that weren't memoir. Um, and even memoir, there weren't a ton. Uh, Persepolis was one of the first books, comic books that I read. Um, Mouse, which is, you know, more of a biography, but those are both these nonfiction comics masterpieces that kind of were the first time that I saw, oh, you can make comics that are not about funny things or not about superheroes that are, they're about serious issues. They're about people's lives in the Holocaust. And, you know, with Joe Sacco reporting on places like Palestine and, and Chechnya and all these other places. So after that, it wasn't like I read those books and was like, oh, I can do comics journalism or I can do a uh, a memoir like Marjan Satrapi, but it did kind of push me a little bit to think about what the boundaries of comics could be. Um, so I started out just doing journal comics, like kind of about my daily life. And when that got a little bit boring, I got tired of myself. Um, I wanted to do something bigger. And that's when the idea for my first book, How to Understand Israel in 60 Days or Less, came about. I knew about this program called Birthright Israel, which sends young Jews to Israel for a free 10 day trip. And I had never wanted to go because I was like, well, this is just propaganda for the Israeli state, I'm not interested. But then when I started doing comics, I was like, wait, this could be really interesting to go on this trip and make a comic about like how wild it is that they're using this program to, to brainwash people. Um, and so I went and it was, you know, definitely, more complicated than I had imagined, um, but it did give interesting material for a book. And after I finished that book was when I went on the trip for Rolling Blackouts. And at that point I was more interested in moving more firmly into journalism, uh, just because I was really into journalism. I read a lot of long form journalism. I was really fascinated by the work that my journalist, my prose journalist friends were doing. Um, and so I was like, yeah, why not? I can try this now. Um, so that's, I mean, I just talked for a long time, but um, that's kind of like how I segued into comics journalism. And by now I'm kind of moving more into not memoir, but more essayistic nonfiction comics, I'd say, um, that does still have reporting in it and elements of journalism, but it's still kind of like at the borders of journalism, I'd say. I know with a lot of comics journalism, like half of it is the art. And so I would ask like, how did you decide on your current medium? You have a very distinct <laughs> use of watercolors and inks. And I wanted to, how did you come to uh, focus on watercolor? It's funny because um, it, I would like to say that, oh, what, watercolor and I go way back and 
I just knew I wanted to color with watercolors. But actually, when my so when I started How to Understand Israel in 60 Days or Less, I didn't have a publisher. I was just making mini comics, uh, zines, like photocopied black and white comics, and selling them at conventions. And at one of those, when I had two chapters out, this editor from Vertigo Comics, which was under DC at the time, they're gone now. Um, he came to the show and like bought copies of my mini comics and was like, oh, this looks interesting. And I was like, okay, Batman guy, sure. <laughs> like, um, and then two days later, he emailed me and wanted a meeting to see if they could publish my book. Um, and I was like, what? <laughs> okay. Um, so I went in and he was like, look, we really, I really like this, this, these two chapters. I really want to see the rest of the book and we want to publish it. I have two conditions. One, that somebody else letter it because my lettering, not great. Um, and two, that it would be in color. And I think that that was for marketing purposes. I think they knew that they could sell a color book better than a black and white one. And I was like, I always just say yes to things when people say like, we want you to do this. I'm like, sure, I can put it, do it in color. Um, but I was like, what are they talking? I don't know how to color a comic. Um, so I was just kind of racking my brain. Like, I don't know how to do color. Like I tried doing computer color with Photoshop and like, this is before like, you know, iPads and stuff. So it was really a steep learning curve for me. And I was like, this looks bad. I don't want to do that. Um, and then someone suggested, a colleague suggested watercolor. And I was like, okay, yeah, maybe. I don't really have experience with watercolor, but I did, you know, study oil painting in college. Um, I went to an art school, kind of very traditional based art school. And so I was like, watercolor is probably pretty similar. It's like you can, it's a wet medium. Um, so I tried it out and I really just like, I was like, wow, this is great. I love watercolor actually. Um, and like, that was that, like by now it's just like, it feels so natural to me. It's kind of like the fun part of making the comic. Like the hard part is writing, you know, the second hardest part is drawing the layouts and the pencils. Then inking is like pretty easy. And then like watercolor is just like, you know, the fun part where you just get to like turn your brain off and get in a flow. So yeah, like, yeah. Um... So which stories do you enjoy investigating most um, in your comics journalism work? Well, I mean, traveling is great. I miss that a lot because I had a child and then um, COVID hit. So I haven't been really doing much uh, travel-based reportage, but I don't know. I just really like following my curiosity, um, you know, for a while now, I've been working on a book that started, it started just like, oh, I'm going to do a book about how climate change works and the science behind it. And now it's become much more, to me, a story about our relationship to land and to, you know, how we feel like a lot of us feel very separated from nature and therefore separated from climate change. And so it's really just for me, like, I really just like going down these rabbit holes and finding and learning new stuff. Like I pretty much only work on projects where I'm trying to find something out um, and I want my reader to find it out with me. It would be really boring to do a book about something that I already know a lot about. So for me, just anything like that just piques my interest. And the, the hardest part is finding, you know, narrowing that down because especially like with things like climate change, you know, you start out thinking that, oh, this is a very specific topic, but really everything falls under that umbrella. You can kind of go a little bit wild. Um, so yeah, I don't know, but I'm just really interested in people and our relationships to each other in all kinds of ways and our relationships, you know, to the planet, our relationships to, you know, people who are in groups that we feel like we don't understand um but yeah just relationships between beings I guess is is my beat kind of as a segue like you had talked about when you find a story like you like to 
it's just difficult to narrow it down. So what would you say is your approach to conducting your research? Like once you find your idea, how do you go about like narrowing down your specific path that you want to like research for? I take a long time <laughs> and I, I read a lot. I really like books. Um, I don't know. I just pick up a book and then usually, you know, in that first thing that you read, they're going to cite other people and then you have new books that you have to read. Um, and I do kind of get stuck in that sometimes. Um, you can just read forever um, and never start writing. So it is just kind of like taking the time to read, but also having the time to think is really important. It's something that I miss having a small child. Um, you know, for the first year of his life, I was kind of a full-time parent. Then he went to daycare, then COVID hit, and I was a full-time parent again for about nine months, two year. Um, now he's kind of in school a little part-time, but it is hard to get that headspace back that, you know, I had before having kids. Um, and that for me is important, just having time to be able to walk around and let the stuff that you're taking in percolate and connect to other stuff that you may have picked up somewhere else. Um, so it is hard, but it's just kind of like thinking a lot, I guess, taking a lot of notes. I'm finally using Evernote like the rest of the world now and just writing down all the ideas I have in there. It used to be, I would just kind of pick up whatever notebook is hanging around and write down an idea. And then I would have like, notebooks floating around my house that like I'm not an organized person I'm not doing this the right way I'm sure Joe Sacco has a much better system but yeah that's how I do it I'm a mess um you mentioned earlier about how useful it is to look at other people's perspectives and I always want to be learning um while you do your research and while you in investigate any form of journalism how do you deal with and approach subjectivity and like subjective truth in your work, especially with comics journalism, there's that interest in displaying facts and displaying things as they are. And I know that for some audiences, comics journalism is, comics journalism's approach to truth is very unique in that way. So how do you approach that? I guess I really embrace it. Um, I try to make it very clear that this is my point of view and, you know, including myself in the work is part of that. Um, it's like, you can't forget that this is subjective when my face is in, you know, half the panels at least. Um, but also it's like, I think for me, it's a combo of making it very clear when it's my opinion versus when I'm quoting someone else, but also in the background, I'm really trying hard to question my assumptions and question my biases. And we can never, you know, there is no subject subjectivity, no, there is no objectivity in journalism of any kind. Comics, documentary, definitely not documentary, um, but prose journalism, like it might feel more obvious with comics because it's drawn. But to me, that's its strength is that with some of these other mediums, you're kind of separated from it by text or through, you know, the television and people can forget how subjective it is and that there's a person behind it. And to me, the fact that comics is so kind of upfront about it makes it more trustworthy for me. I never forget that someone's telling the story. Um, but I do think that like, anyone who's working in nonfiction or really any person needs to kind of think about what are my biases here? What are the things that I grew up assuming to be true? And might those be a little bit off or might there be just a different way of thinking about this issue or the world? Um, and that there is like more than one truth. So yeah, I guess for me, it's a combo of like being very open about when I have feelings about something and also just like really like, you know, doubling down on myself and being like, have I really approached this from all the angles I should be? Is there something that I'm missing? You know, am I being fair? And I think that's the best you can do really. Would you say this um, 
trying to take accountability for your own like biases, would you say this is one of the more difficult aspects of being a comics journalist, or do you think there are other like things that are as a as a like medium and like as a vehicle for information? Is there anything you feel like is the most difficult aspect of being a comic journalist? I mean, the most difficult thing is conducting interviews, <laughs> for sure. I always get really nervous, no matter how long I've been doing it. I'm always, I always feel stupid and like I'm saying um too much and like the person I'm talking to thinks that I'm wasting their time. Um, yeah, for me, like, I don't know that the first book I did about Israel and Palestine, that was the first time I really like under, I was young when I went on that trip. I was, well, not that young, I guess, but 27, um, you're probably younger, <laughs> but when I went on that trip, I kind of like, I read the New York Times and, you know, and listened to NPR and those are unbiased sources of news. And, you know, I can trust everything that they say. And going on that trip, I realized that there was a, like a lot of stuff that I didn't know. There's a lot of things that I, you know, hadn't understood or that I felt lied to about by these, you know, media organizations that I trusted. And, it kind of made me understand that like, oh yeah, like these are biased in, in their own ways, you know? And, and it's not to say that they're either even like they're evil or something, I don't think so, but like biases is, is everywhere. And so that was, and like that I could be confused about stuff and that there was no right answer. It was a real like emotional kind of process for me to like get over myself and to like, discover that I wasn't going to ever know everything and be like really sure about what I believed. Um, but after that, it was kind of freeing, like finding out that I'm wrong about something or that like, you know, maybe I like approach something the wrong way is, you know, it always like feels a little embarrassing or it stings or you're like, oh, that's, that sucks. But it's not as destabilizing as before. Um, and now it's kind of like, it's cool. Like you go through like the pain of like, oh, I was wrong about something, but then you come out the other end and it's like, well, now I know more than I did before. So it's, I don't know, that's kind of like one of my favorite parts is like rethinking some way that you're doing things. Um, but yeah, interviews are scary. I don't like them. <laughs> yeah, I get that about interviews. Yeah. Um, I know that comics journalism is still a very like novel, I feel, form of journalism. Like there's still such a small group of people who consider them comics journalists. And I do think it is starting to get a bit more of a popular, like taken a bit more seriously. How would how do you think comics journalism would evolve in the future? Gosh, I don't know. I mean, there's so much of it now, like especially with the nib and stuff. Um but one of the problems is that I don't really know if it's, I mean, I don't want to shit talk the nib, like, you know, they've published me for a long time. I've worked with Matt Bores for like 15 years now or something, but like, not that long, 10 years. Um, but I do think there's a problem when you're trying to make comics journalism that's really short, that fits into two pages, or, you know, I'm just starting work now for them on a comic that's going to be in their magazine, it's going to be 10 pages, but two of those pages are going to be the title page. So I have eight pages left. And I'm like, I can't fit anything into eight pages. That's like an introduction. Like to me, books are really where it's at. Like a book length project, you can like fit almost a New Yorker article's worth of information, in, you know, like um, it's still not enough, but it's getting there. And so I, and like, that's why I love reading, you know, Joe's books, like his, his latest pain in the land, like he can really go into depth about a lot of different issues in a topic and, you know, really like get to some, like some truth there. But I feel like it's hard to do that with short form comics journalism. So I would love to see more outlets that allow for longer pieces and that can pay people to do longer pieces because I think that you know I see a lot of young comics journalists right now who are really amazing have a lot of talent and you know 
voices that need to be heard. And I, I just want them to have the space to tell those stories. Um, and I love the nib, but they need more than four pages to do that. So yeah, I hope there's more room for, for that. I, yeah, uh, it's, it's really interesting to hear your thoughts on the future of a field that in many ways is still developing very rapidly, but is also like, they always say there's no rules for comics journalism, or at least I've, I, somebody told me that, maybe Joe Sacco, somebody, probably <laughs> Joe Sacco. Um, but it's, it's really interesting to see how somebody in the field looks at it. And it's really amazing. Um, do you think of yourself more as an artist or more as a journalist? It, it sounds sort of like an interesting, almost silly question, because of course you're a comics journalist, <laughs> but I don't know. Sometimes journalists see themselves as like, well, that, yeah, I don't know. Like the voice of, of the people or <laughs> what, what perspective do you take on that, I guess? I don't know. I, maybe as a mediocre writer, like a writer who cheats by drawing pictures to go with them um, so people will read the stuff. I don't know, like it depends on what you're what you're doing at the moment, right? Um, you know, like right now that I'm in this like heavy like research and writing phase, I feel more like a journalist or more like an essayist maybe. Um, and the way I work is that I usually do research and writing I write the whole script and then I draw everything. Um, sometimes making a lot of big changes as I go along, but you know, I do the things at several times and I'm a Gemini, so, you know, split personality. So sometimes journalists, sometimes artists, and, you know, sometimes both at the same time, but yeah, I don't know. I think those things really exist together. Um, and yeah, I don't know. For a long time, I've just been a mom, so I'm like happy to be back working again. But boy, like talk about something that can like erase the rest of your identity for a while. It's yeah, I recommend it, but it's hard. Sorry, that's just that's just awesome. I love your perspective on this. It's so great <laughs> to talk to you. Um, I guess just to close out, what is the most important advice? that you can give to aspiring journalists or aspiring comic writers or aspiring you know fiction comic writers or just aspiring artists what what advice could you give just to you know i don't want to say don't be afraid of interviewing or whatever be afraid but do it anyway <laughs> that's kind of what i did you know even from the very start like when i got that book deal with vertigo um, I had never done a book before. I did not know if I could do that in the amount of time that they asked me to do it, but I just, you know, you say yes, and then you figure it out later. And with journalism, when I started kind of doing interviews, like I did some kind of like, kind of reporting in my, in my city, just to kind of practice. And I did some like man on the street, like interviews with people like near ground zero, because I live in New York. Um, and it was really scary just going up to random people and being like, excuse me, can I ask you some questions? Um, but you kind of just do it anyway. And then it's like this big rush at the end when you're like, I did it. I talked to a person <laughs> and I'm very shy. Like I grew up very, very shy. So it's not easy for me. Um, so yeah, I guess like, don't try to like wait until you're not afraid anymore. Just do it even if you're afraid, you just do it anyway yeah also read a lot and you know try to tell the truth that's pretty basic but also good advice well thank you so much um that was all super insightful and uh it seems we are out of time but this was uh, just an amazing experience so it's so great to have you um this was an interview for art of news a comics journalism exhibition and thanks so much sarah glennon for taking the time to talk to us and have this interview and we're super excited to see your work in the fall. Thank um, you guys do you have any last comments? Oh no, I'm just excited to come out to Oregon and see you guys. Like, will all of you be there this fall? Yay, okay. It's gonna be really fun. It's gonna be the first time I've traveled since COVID. So I'm so excited. So yeah.
Thank you so much for your questions. They're really good.